everyone and welcome to this video of Orchid Lingo where I will be talking about pH from my point of view and I do not want to step on anybody's toes. This is my point of view, my opinion, this is what I do try to do in order for my orchids to get the right amount of nutrients because I grow in lecker and self water inorganic. I feel as though I am controlling the nutrients much better. Whether I am successful with how I do things and I get the right amount of growth and health into my orchids with the nutrients and the pHing that I do is a separate point. But my attempt is with my inorganic growing to be able to say this is what I'm putting into my orchids today at this quantity and at this pH because I want XYZ level of nutrients to be absorbed and focus on those more than maybe others. Needless to say, I have incurred some deficiencies in my time, but I used to grow in organic media. I wasn't well versed with the subject of pH at the time. My orchids grew really well anyway, so there's a lot of fuss about pH and nutrient uptake, etc. I don't want to disparage anybody when I say there's a lot of fuss, because we want our orchids to do well and we want to get the information as best as we can and apply it to our collection. The thing with pH is something that needs to be known the orchids that we most commonly grow, they don't need to be pH'd in such a specific way to be healthy and happy. Specialized growers will know exactly which orchid needs a very acidic pH in order to be happy and absorb nutrients. Then there's orchids that just, if you were to do nothing with a pH and just fertilize as per normal, the fertilizer usually does the job, brings the level of the watt down to an acceptable pH. That's it, job done. It's mainly the out of a curiosity factor that the pH thing, in my opinion, has entered my life and the way I grow and water my orchids. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry for anything that I don't have any kind of footage of we've got Lelia Harpophila and Paphia Pedalum mint chocolate keeping us company. But anyway, back to the pH. Let's just say you've never pH'd in your life and your orchids are doing well. That is because your fertilizer is putting the pH already into a level where the nutrients can be absorbed. And that's perfect. I don't see that pHing is such an obligation for any grower to feel embarrassed about that they don't actually pH their solution and their orchids are doing great. I think it's perfect. Perfect. And when that happens, I would just be really glad about it instead of worrying about I'm not pHing, I don't understand pH, I must be doing something wrong. Well, you're not. Clearly your orchids are doing great, they're blooming, they're not showing signs of deficiency, so you've got it all dialed in, even though you may have never pH'd in your life before. So I congratulate you, I shake your hand. When I started with this third collection, the inorganic growing, the pH factor became much more relevant to me because inorganic means there is nothing in that media whatsoever for the orchid to draw on. On top of that, my water quality from the tap is so, so bad, clearly almost to the point of toxic for my orchids. Then I had to also make the decision to water using reverse osmosis water, which is a water supply that also has absolutely no nutrients in it. It is void of anything. So orchids can grow on very, very little fertilizer. They don't need a lot, but they can't grow on absolutely nothing. And with inorganic growing, the challenge becomes even more intense and laborious to understand what orchids require to grow well. And it even begins to the point of fine roots up to chunky roots. And that is where pH becomes a big, big deal. I have seen deficiencies in my orchids based on the fact that I wasn't pHing correctly or the fact that my LECA had a pH, even though LECA is pH neutral, but pH neutral based on what? And that is something that needs to be understood for everybody's brand of media if you're growing in inorganic media. So based on the fact that my water comes out at seven, using my example, and then maybe you can apply it to your example. My RO water comes at around seven out of the RO faucet. When I store my LECA in water that has a pH of seven, after a couple of days, that pH has gone up to eight. That's where it steadies out at 8 pH. So when I use that lecker for my orchids, it has a pH of 8, even though it is pH neutral. I hope that makes sense. It means that when I put in water, be it plain water, no nutrient solution, nothing, my water is at 7. Eventually, when that water gets into my lecker, 
it will start to balance itself out to, let's just say, the happy medium of 7.5. Because once again, my Lekko went into the pot at a pH of 8. Now that may not be the case where you are, and that is why I'm talking about pH today. When I say I pH between 5.8 and let's say 6.7, if you look at the pH nutrient absorption chart, you can see where the bars are fattest. And that means that is where the nutrients in question are at a higher absorption rate based on the pH. A lot of people say that the water pH for fertilizing orchids can be between 5.5 and 6. 6.5 and that is true because based on what you see on the chart the bars get fatter with iron manganese baron etc the lower the ph goes but you can see that nitrogen phosphorus potassium up there the bars are getting skinnier so when you see on my chart what i'm trying to point out with the 5.8 and the 6.3 ph you can see that all the bars are pretty much stable in their fatness or skinniness for lack of a better term meaning that there is an equal absorption of all the minerals at 5.8 and then if we want to focus on the macronutrients like nitrogen calcium magnesium the big ones that I call the top guns of nutrients that our orchids need they get fatter at 6.3 but the micronutrients are still being absorbed even at 6.3. The higher we go with our pH chart, we can go to 6.5. The bar is much fatter, so 6.5 is optimum for those nutrients. And then the absorption rate and the quantity being absorbed is also much, much higher. But then the macronutrients get skinnier and skinnier as we move across 6.5 all the way through to 7 pH. So the pHing is mainly targeting nutrients that we want our orchids to absorb. This goes for organic growing as well. I am not excluding organic growing. I'm just saying how important it was for an inorganic grower like myself to get the pH adjustments right so that my orchids will absorb the nutrients I'm trying to control and hopefully balancing it out properly for them. Now, in organic growing, there's one thing that differs from inorganic growing. Organic growing, the media will break down. So if your solution is, let's say, at 6.5, Let's use that because that's perfect for everybody. 6.5, we have our fertilizer solution. It comes out at 6.5, perfect. And we put that into the pot. In my inorganic media of Lekka, I know that I'm putting it at 6.5 and eventually it'll rise a little bit because my Lekka was stored at 8 pH. So I might come out at about 6.7, 6.8, depending how quickly the orchid absorbs the water. If I put 6.5 into an organic Pot. If the organic media is fresh, as in six months old, I am guaranteed pretty much that the nutrients that I've put into my solution will be absorbed at 6.5 without any problems. Organic media, of course, has a tendency to break down and any breakdown causes a more acidic climate in the pot, which means that if I go in at 6.5 with my water, actually what is happening in the pot could be 6.3, it could be 6. And now look at the bars of the macronutrients we we're trying to put in, how skinny they get, the lower down we go. And that is why pHing is so important because what we think we're putting into a pot may not actually be what the orchid is absorbing, especially in organic growing media. For me, the most common is bark and sphagnum moss. And then that's where deficiencies can occur because we can come into a rhythm, and I include myself in that, even though I am growing in inorganic media, we come into a rhythm. This is what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna do, it's been working great, and we keep doing the same thing over and over again. Not realizing that something is going on in the pot we may actually be fertilizing at xph but what's happening in the pot is completely different and then after six eight months maybe a year deficiencies show up then it'll take another six eight months to a year to correct those deficiencies but we need to understand that in order to even correct a deficiency we have to make sure that what is going in the pot is the correct ph otherwise the orchid cannot absorb the nutrients we're trying to target at that ph level so 5.5 to 6.5 any water solution is ideal no problem with that whatsoever so why am i pointing out 5.8 and 6.3 there's also a lot of talk about ph swinging 
as in at one point in time you fertilize with a lower pH and another point in time we fertilize with a higher pH. And between that time we are hoping that our pH is correct in the pot and that the orchids can take up the micronutrients a little bit better and the orchids can take up the macronutrients at a higher pH a little bit better, giving us the opportunity then to balance out what the orchid is actually taking in. Now, I prefer to always err on the side of caution, and especially when it comes to organic media. If I were to suggest to do a pH swing of 5.5 to 6.5, for example, if my media is breaking down, the 5.5 that goes into the pot can drop to 5.0, and then you can see how the nitrogen, the macronutrients are not being absorbed. You see how skinny the bars are. And vice versa, if I go up and say 6.5, and my pot is much more acidic, you can see that by six, you have an even amount of absorption of everything. But if you're targeting and correcting a deficiency, then you need to make sure that the pH in your pot is according to what you're putting into the pot and not turning more acidic because you will be wasting product and not getting the effect of correcting a deficiency. Gosh, I hope this makes sense. That is why I always go a little bit, let's say, higher. My minimum pH and never below that is 5.8 because in my pot, I am anticipating that the 8 pH of the Lekka, original 8 pH that the pot might have had, will then wick up and absorb and raise my pH to a 6.3 level, something around there, depending on how quickly the orchid absorbs the water. And the same goes for organic growing. I would never pH below 5.8, because at least for the first introduction of the water into the pot, the macronutrients are still pretty readily available at 5.8, but the longer the pot is wet, the acidity of the media will drop my pH and then my macronutrients become less available and my micronutrients will become available. Orchids need more calcium and magnesium and nitrogen than any other plants. And for that reason, pHing at around a 6.5, 6.3 is the safest bet, in my opinion, for any solution. Orchid-specific fertilizer is manufactured in such a way, if you follow the manufacturer's instructions and put it into the right amount of water, the pH is going to drop to an ideal that you can use straight away without pHing, 6.5, 6.7, 6.4. It will be perfect for that fertilizer, for that quantity of water. If you take a generic fertilizer, for example, we cannot use the manufacturer's instruction strength to prepare our nutrient solution. That would be way too high for orchids. So we always recommend a quarter strength depending on orchid, but the safe bet, let's always stay on the safe side first. The safe bet is to go with a quarter strength. Now, this fertilizer is generic. It may not drop the pH like an orchid-specific fertilizer would. And that is where pHing would be important to see if my generic fertilizer is actually dropping the pH to a 6.5, a 6.4, like I said, even a 6.7. It doesn't matter as long as we are getting macronutrients into the orchid. But generic fertilizers, if we are using a quarter strength in a quantity of water that is not according to the manufacturer's instructions, that pH may not drop. And that is when it is important with using generic fertilizers to sometimes check if the pH is correct because we are trying to get the orchids to take in nutrients that are fundamental for the growth. Having said on that, by and large, a pH between 6 and 8 should be okay and will keep orchids alive. So if you want to dial in your care and provide optimal conditions, or if you want to grow orchids that are commonly considered difficult to keep, then consider adjusting your pH. The goal of pHing is to match the balance of nutrients the orchid would have access to in its native environment. And the pH can alter which nutrients are most soluble and available to a plant, and different nutrients are available at higher pH versus lower pH. And I'm hoping that this chart was easy enough to understand and that if you hear me saying I'm going in at 5.8 pH with my fertilizer solution, that you also understand that I know what is happening in my pot as the water gets wicked up to the roots. If I'm going in at 6.3, same thing. Water will wick up and make the macronutrients a little bit more available. So if you want to check the pH of what is going on in your pot, you can do the following. Give the pot a good flush, collect the runoff, and then measure the pH of that runoff. It will give you an idea of the climate in the pot.
And then you can decide whether your orchid needs to be repotted, the media is breaking down, or if your pH is way too low, so you might want to up the pH to counteract the acidity in the pot. My personal preference, my pH should never drop below 5.8. It keeps me safe. It means that my macronutrients are being absorbed not in higher quantities, but it also means that my micronutrients are being absorbed not in higher quantities. There is a clear balance going through. I pH swing all the way up to 6.3 because I know my pot, my pH is going to rise with the wicking effect for organic growing. I would definitely pH up to 6.5, if not all the way up to 7. And if you are not pHing and your orchids are doing fine, don't think that now that you've seen this video, and thank you so much if you're still here, that you now need to start pHing. If it has piqued your curiosity, that's great too, because that's how I started, especially with inorganic growing. My curiosity was more alert to the fact that I've got zero nutrients in my media and zero nutrients in my water. I have to provide nutrients. And how do I go about that? And that's when the pH came in and understanding all these nutrients and the levels at which they are being absorbed. If you've never done any of this and your orchids are doing fine, my hat goes off to you. You're living the dream for an orchid grower. <laughs> But if you have any questions after all this jibber jabber, please also know that the comments are there for a reason. I welcome the dialogue and I fully understand that everybody has a different way of going about things. This is my way is not the way. My way is my way, like Frank Sinatra sang. <laughs> Anyway, I appreciate it. I hope this was helpful. I really, really do. Know that you can ask me anything when it comes to the subject. I'll be very happy to elaborate in a follow-up video if necessary. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time very, very much. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.